to help out all the idiots, as usual. So guys and girls, if, you, if you're doing drag curls, okay? Like everyone sees people lay back on the bench, do their dumbbell curls, they're fucking on the incline bench laid back going, like having no tension on the dumbbell. The same style I showed you for flies, where you guys walk out, so I walk out here and I'm letting my shoulders retract, set back. I can do the same thing with curls now and I can literally be here and curl up. So if you look from the side, my elbow doesn't move. My upper arm, my bicep doesn't move, I just drag up through. So I've got to drag the, drag the cable, which is loose, and squeeze up into my bicep. I don't go out. I don't know why I would go out on a, on a dumbbell and have no tension. When here I have a straight line of tension the entire time, pulling my hand back, and I'm relaxed as fuck. So my bicep relaxes and extends. If I want more tension, I walk out further. I stand here, I squeeze up. So all I'm doing is breaking elbow. I'm literally breaking elbow back there and sliding bicep up, and, so hand into shoulder. It's the easiest exercise on the planet. You don't need much weight. And you can stop laying on dumbbell, on benches, swinging dumbbells up in the air that have no tension on them. And wondering like, when I get to the bottom, I don't really feel it. It's like, yeah, because there's no tension there. There's tension there. Like, it's that simple. It's a life, life hack for the day right there. Everything I say, I preface by saying this will piss them off. So there's all these like, we all know the science-based guys. I give you a minute in your, in your mind right now to think of your top three. When you think of those top three, I don't know who you're gonna pick. I'm not gonna say it, but any top three you choose. Tell me if you would describe their body as their physique as excellent, average, or mediocre. And where would you put them in that? I guarantee you it's not in excellent at the top. It's somewhere in the middle, right? So my question to that is, science guys really need to answer this question before anything. Why is it that you remain so mediocre, yet you know so much? Because if I knew a lot of shit, like I would be, a, I would be very well versed and good at that at that topic, right? Like, say I was some financial wizard, I knew how to like read the stock market, and I'm like, I can see investments and like I can see what businesses are going to succeed. I'd be fucking rich, right? I think people would be like, yeah, he's a fucking genius because like look at him, he applied it and it fucking worked. In bodybuilding, you can be like this big or this short in some cases, maybe this short in other cases. It's always short though, no taller than Bassett, and somehow you're an expert on muscle but you don't have any. And if you do have any, it's not that well put together and there's a lot of like holes in the physique and you've prided yourself on being strong. I'm fucking little, but I'm strong. Fucking stronger than you, dude. It's like, strong doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you still are trying to squat six plates. I'm not squatting six plates. My legs are still bigger than yours. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so you can hang your hat on strength and all that stuff, but like it comes down to the fact that like, Sadly, you, you do need to have, you do need to apply what it is that you know for people to trust you. And like, people just don't trust you guys. Like, and you, and you kids out there that are looking for, for these kids, like maybe because they look more like you, you can identify with how they look. They're not like overly massive dudes. They're not like the size of a fucking Derek Lunsford or Samson. As if Derek Lunsford or Samson or some of those guys like started like giving out serious tips, like bro, like this is what you guys need to do. And they, but they're not gonna do that because they're too focused on being great bodybuilders. They're focused on their careers. But if they told you like, this is how I did this, they went into detail this, people would, ever, everyone would leave you and gravitate towards them. Because they'd be like, those guys know what they're doing. Look at the fucking size of them, right? But they got these fucking nerds or these fucking dorks who like, they jump in shows and they, 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 they try and prove themselves in shows and they come in like fucking last in their, in their like call out. And it's like, if he, if he knows so much, why isn't his body developed? It's so underdeveloped compared to all these other people. It could be 15 other guys. You were the last, every one of them was better than you. But we should listen to you because you did a show once and you, and you make it sound really fancy when you talk about lifting weights. It's like, I don't know how that's become a thing. I don't think it's like a thing in any other industry other than maybe like, like there's also, there's a lot of scammers if you guys know in like the day trading world. Anyone who's a day trader or a fucking Bitcoin guy, 
fucking sell, buying and selling Ethereum or whatever and all this shit, and like they're day traders sitting in front of things and they're like gonna guess the trends. Those guys are all fucking bullshit artists, guys. Run from them. They're the, they're, those guys are the, the guys I'm talking about in the fitness world. Yeah. And you would run from them in the financial world, run from them here. They don't know what they're doing. The fact that they come in here, they come into the gym every week and they have videos coming all the time of new exercises. Knew this, knew that, try this, try this. I just tried this machine and I, I sat this way and I went like this. And I felt my, I never felt my lats so much because I just randomly thought of doing this right now. It's like, it's called snake oil. It doesn't work, you know what I mean? So just obliterate that shit from, like block them from your feed. Do not follow them and do not confuse yourself. You'd be better off watching like a bodybuilder's video from like 1990s when I've been training, like Nasser El Sambade or like, Chris Cormier or fucking even Sean Ray or fucking Lee Priest, any of these guys. Watch them train, watch how they move, watch their intensity. Don't watch these fucking kids that have never done anything and don't deserve your fucking eyes, your eyes or your views. It's a complete waste of your fuck fucking time, right? Hold on, I get this other one out. I forget it. Oh yeah. That's my other point. So, there's tons of people out there Friend of mine, Ian, is even coming out with his own app, Fit Connect. Fuck, I keep saying that wrong. Is it Fit Kinetic? Fanatic? Yeah, okay, whatever. We'll dub over what it is, really. <laughs> we'll just flash it. Say Ian's coming out with an app. <laughs> Put it up. But it's like, so, and there's also like Mike Kizertel has an app. All these people have an app. Uh, I think Hypertrophy Coach John or Joe Bennett has an app. So there's all this, there's all this, there's all these tools out there to keep you guys accountable and to give you structure and to give you a foundation if that's something that you need as an individual. And some people just do. That's just how some people's brains work. They have to have like structure, they have to have it laid out for them. There's nothing wrong with that. But like, if you find yourself getting tired of that and like, just it's too much for you, like I'm just, you're almost, you're almost not enjoying the process anymore because it's like I'm, I'm, it's like I'm looking at my phone, I'm doing this, I'm writing this down, like I don't know what, I'm not progressing, it's like, just abandon that shit, guys. Like, try the most basic thing ever. For all your body parts, okay, pick four to five exercises, we're gonna put this on the screen, you guys can add this. For every body part, pick four to five exercises. And of these exercises, they're exercises that you feel the most, you're the strongest in, and you connect with the most. So you gotta go through your, you gotta be honest with yourself and be like, when I do back, I don't really feel when I do this, but like, I really feel this. That's one to keep. And then you go to the next exercise. I feel this one like crazy, it's one to keep. It could be another row, it could be a pull down, whatever it is. Keep these four to five exercises. Understanding that you're gonna keep those now for the next four to six months. Those are the only exercises you're gonna do when you come in to do that body part. But you're gonna fucking focus on doing them better every time you come in the gym. So doing them better doesn't mean going heavier. That means feeling them better. So I position myself better, I engage better, I, I'm understanding how to lift up three things, I'm understanding how to settle, I'm understanding how to relax. I keep a log of how I felt through the workout in the sense that I keep, if you wanna keep track of the poundages, cool, but like don't focus on the poundages. And it's like understand like at the end of the workout, do I feel, do I feel like I engaged my chest, I'm more pumped than I was last week or do I not? and then make adjustments for the next time you train. Because literally that's all that matters. Like your numbers going up are just for you to think to yourself that you're progressing, but you may not be, because you're doing everything horribly. Whereas if you focus on how well you feel things from week to week, and you pick four or five core exercises for arms, for backs, for chest, for legs, for fucking whatever, right? And you pick those things and you work on them like, it's like you're, if you're gonna be drilling them all the time, you've heard this term in boxing and in other sports, drillers become killers. Like you become efficient and you become very good at what you do, right? And you acclimate to the movement, you get stronger at the movement. The more often you do that movement, the better you are at it. So think about it in that terms of weightlifting too. Like pick the exercises and the, and the lifts that you excel at and excel at them more. Don't worry about like so-and-so said to do one arm cable pull downs with, with like holding like the band on the ground and do this stuff. Like no, 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 pick the basics that you know. Even if some of them aren't basic, but you do them really well, and tell me that in six, four to six months, you're not better. You don't visually look better, and you're not stronger, and you don't feel better. Instead of just confusing yourself with all this nonsense, right? Like, and it's easy to pick those four or five exercises. Because you, like, you got shit to play with in there. You can sub in and out. You don't have to do them all in the same order. You can mix and match them one week. You can superset them. You can triple set them. You can like, individual set them the whole time. 
You can do all kinds of shit to like make variety happen, right? It's not like you're stuck doing the same thing over and over again. You're just using those exercises to get better at that body part. So take your five chest exercises or four X chest exercises and fucking do them. And the next thing you know, wow, Mike was right. And I didn't have to pay him for it. And all I had to do is just keep it simple and get the fuck out of the gym and train hard when I'm there and like look at the progress I've made and be very aware of how I'm doing things, not so much what I'm doing, right? The how is way important, more and more important than the what. We don't care about the what. Someone could tell you like, oh man, guys, this machine right here is how I grew my back. I fucking made my back so much bigger using this machine, you guys will too. I'm not gonna tell you how, but just use it. And they walk off, right? Like, how did you do it? Like, what did you do? I don't know, understand, like, how do I fucking, how do I learn from that? Like, this machine here. That's what did all. And then you get like, gym owners like, we need to get that machine, that machine is gonna make you go girl. It's like, you don't know how to use it, dude. It's like, this is the best basketball. This is the best basketball that you can buy, Bassett. This is what I use, this is what Steph Curry uses. Use this basketball. Doesn't know how to play basketball. Like, 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 he doesn't know how to shoot, doesn't know anything. But he's got the best basketball, right? Got the best shoes too. Got Steph Curry shoes on or LeBron's or right? Like, I'm fucking, I, here, I know the stuff. Like, I showed up, you know what I mean? It's the same thing as that shit. Yeah, so I've noticed this kind of sickening trend in social media where retired bodybuilders, I say that in quotation marks, half the time people aren't, are like people who competed before, it's especially with women it's becoming more prevalent with men. It's as soon as they get out of the sport or as soon as they're no longer competing, they absolutely shit on the sport. So every girl that used to compete now has an eating disorder, right? Every guy who used to compete now has like, oh, my liver's all fucked from from abusing steroids and lifting so hard and like it's just like woe is me like poor me shit it's like you came into this guys and understood the risks especially the guys and the girls like if you're bitching right and odds are the ones that have the eating disorders because of bodybuilding guess what you had before bodybuilding an eating disorder and that's what made you get into bodybuilding or fitness to begin with because you thought that the structure would take away the problem but all it did was exacerbate the problem and make it worse. So now when you don't have structure, you tailspin. And you gain 40 fucking pounds and you blame it on bodybuilding. Oh, they took drugs and they made me, uh, they, oh, it's such an unhealthy thing, I had to starve myself. No, no, you chose to because you had a problem to begin with. The problem existed before the fucking stimulus, right? It, you did it to like fix one or the other. So like when I see these videos of, you know, girls go online and they're fucking crying about like I have a, a this eating disorder, that eating disorder, I just, I'm just focusing on my health now. Or like guys go on, they're like, you know man, I've, I've, like, like I've had, I have two fake hips, I have a fake shoulder. I've never once bad mouthed bodybuilding. I understood the risks. I understood the risks of playing football. I understood him later in my life, I'm probably gonna be a mess, but I didn't give a fuck. I just did it because I wanted to do it. And I thought like, and I'm like, when I'm 50, I'm not gonna be doing that shit anyway. So what do I care if my fips are fake? I'm not fucking running around a football field anymore. You know what I mean? I don't bitch about it, I'm not mad at bodybuilding, I'm not mad at the fucking sport and saying you fucking this and that. Like, and it's like, if you're gonna, guys, if you're gonna pump all these fucking drugs and have no fucking, have complete reckless abandon and not do your blood work and get checked out, don't get mad when your kidneys fail or your fucking liver goes to shit. <laughs> Or you like have a fucking heart attack. Like, it's fucking, what do you expect? Like, it's like touching a stove and going, ah, oh, it's hot. And then touching it and oh, like, oh, fuck, I didn't know. Is it still, oh, God. Like, you're just an idiot. You keep doing the same shit over and over again. It's like, it's just, I don't, it's like this, it's this, this idea of recycled content. Like, I have to stay relevant. I'm not competing anymore. Boom, I shift into a bitcher and moaner. And, and about wellness and like turning people on to the, the dark side of things and like I need to work through my trauma. It's like, you guys are just looking for attention in another way. You've just circumnavigated around the not competing anymore. So now you can't post pictures of your body and everyone be like, ooh. Now they have to be like, oh, she's such a solid person or he's such a solid person. Like they're helping us out, man. It's like, get the fuck out of here, bro.
Like the stuff I tell you is to, the stuff I say is to make people better because there's just nonsense being shown to you and you should understand that it's nonsense. And I would, you know, people that I talk about or I make fun of or point out their clips, I would argue with them in person about their fucking shit. I'd be like, this is nonsense. Why are you showing this to people? It's stupid. All you're doing is making things worse, right? So I just, that whole fucking idea of like, the sport, like, cause it's, it pisses me off more because, like, you'll, these people say you were wine back five years. Yeah. The same person that's bitching about their problem now, five years ago was, like, making videos, like, if I didn't have bodybuilding, I don't know what would have happened to me. I love it. It's made my life, it's made my life so much more complete. I'm, like, such a happy person. I have, I have goals. I have structure. And then, like, go to present day, and they're, like, bodybuilding made me a fucking, uh, fuck, it ruined my life. I hated it, I hated every minute, I used to hate it, but I did, I don't know why, I didn't stop sooner. It's like, how, what? Like, are you mentally ill? You gotta get on the fucking Zoloft, man. Like, chill the fuck out. Like, you just don't compete anymore, don't worry. People still look at you. Go on OnlyFans.